In this video, we'll show you how to lay out your plate for analysis in CFX Maestro software. Plate setup is done through a virtual plate layout that lets you designate unknowns, standards, controls, technical replicates, and biological groups, and we'll be covering all of these areas in this video. To begin, let's open up a new plate file. We start by choosing File, New, Plate. A blank 96 well layout is now shown. If you instead want to create a layout for a 384 well plate, go to Settings, Plate Size, and then choose 384 well. For now, we'll be working with a 96 well plate setup. The next step is to choose the scan mode. This will either be Cyber slash FAM, which is most common when just using a single channel for analysis. Or, if doing a multiplex setup, we will instead choose all channels in the scan mode. Here, we're doing a singleplex experiment and using Cyber Green. We'll now begin layout of our plate, and we'll start with creating our unknowns. You can enter data for any single well by clicking on that well. Or you can also enter identical data into multiple wells at once by clicking and holding your mouse button while dragging the cursor over multiple wells. Once you are ready to enter data into a well or into a group of wells, look to the right side of the screen where data is entered. We'll begin by choosing the fluorophores we'll be using for our experiment. Next, we'll select the type of sample that will be loaded into the well. In this case, we'll choose unknown. Then check the box for which dye or probes will be in the well and enter the name of the gene that will be associated with each dye or probe. For these samples, we'll be analyzing IL-1 beta, and we'll enter this by typing in the gene name or selecting one from the drop-down menu and then clicking the Load button or hitting Enter once you've typed in the gene name. We can now enter sample names. Here, we are going to be using triplicate technical replicates, so I'm going to select the three wells of my replicates for each sample and enter a unique sample identifier for each group of three wells. And I'll do this for four different samples. Sample 1, Sample 2, Sample 3, and Sample 4. For now, we'll skip the Biological Group section and move on to Designating Technical Replicates. To designate technical replicates of your sample, click and drag the mouse over your unknown samples. We will then click the Technical Replicates button. Here you can see that you can choose replicate size, starting replicate number, and whether the replicate should be horizontal or vertical. In this case, the replicate size is 3, and we want to start at replicate number 1. We have no other unknowns on our plate so far, and since these replicates are in a horizontal direction, we'll choose horizontal. One important thing to keep in mind here is that all technical replicates for a given unknown need to have exactly the same contents. So the fluorophores, selected genes, sample type, and sample name need to be identical. Once we are confident that the well types are the same, we just click Apply. We can check to make sure we did this correctly by clicking the Show Technical Replicates button. All identical replicates are highlighted in the same color to make visual identification easy. Let's now explore how to create a standard curve. Our curve will be an 8-point serial dilution with two technical replicates for each concentration. First, click and highlight all wells which will make up the standard curve. Then, choose sample type Standard and click the button for the fluorophore and gene for the curve. In this case, we'll again be using IL-1 beta, which is now found in our drop-down menu since we added it to our unknowns. Next, we need to designate these as technical replicates. So click the Technical Replicates button, choose Replicate Size 2, Horizontal for the direction, and click Apply. If at any point you make a mistake, you can click the Undo button to undo your last action. There's also a Redo button as well. Once we have designated the replicates for the wells, then it's easy to create a serial dilution. 
Just click on the dilution series box and a panel will open where we can input our starting concentration, which replicate numbers the dilution we begin and end on, our dilution factor, and whether the concentrations are increasing or decreasing. Here, we'll start with a concentration of 10 to the 6th units. CFX Maestro automatically detects that our replicates go from standard 1 to standard 8, so this data is pre-populated. The default dilution factor is 10, and we'll be sure to click the Decreasing button, as this standard curve will be decreasing in concentration. Once we click Apply, our standard curve is created. One important note, the automatic dilution series function won't work unless we have at least two technical replicates for each point on the standard series designated. This is to ensure that best practices in qPCR experiment design are used. You should always have at least two replicates for every point on your standard curve. Let's take a brief look at creating controls. Creating a control is very similar to creating an unknown. Click on a well, then in the sample type dropdown, choose your control type. Here, we'll choose No Template Control, or NTC. Next, choose the gene for this NTC. Again, we'll choose IL-1 Beta, and we're done. If you wanted to create replicates, you'd do so in the same way that we created replicates for unknowns. Finally, let's explore how to create biological groups. Biological groups provide more flexibility for analysis than just samples alone. By grouping samples together in biological groups, you can then analyze these samples in aggregate. It's a powerful analysis tool in CFX Maestro software. In this example, we'll be creating two biological groups, untreated and treated. Sample 1 and Sample 2 make up our untreated biological group, while Sample 3 and 4 make up the treated group. First, we will designate the samples for our untreated group. We'll highlight all replicates for samples 1 and 2, and then in the Biological Groups box, click the plus button and type in your biological group name, untreated. Then click Load or hit Enter. All selected cells are now part of the biological group untreated. We'll do this again for sample 3 and sample 4, and then we'll label these as treated. To verify our biological groups have been designated correctly, we can click the Show Biological Groups button. And as with technical replicates, all wells that are part of the same group are highlighted in the same color. We're now done with plate layout, and now have the option to save this plate layout for later use. Here we will click File, then Save and name our plate. Let's call it Example Plate. And we can also use this plate layout as a template to quickly modify for a similar future experiment. As an added tip, it's worth noting one of the nice things about CFX Maestro software is that you can perform the setup and layout of your plate in the software at any time, before, during, or even after your run. If you want to get your PCR run started quickly, just select your run protocol, place your fully loaded PCR plate into your CFX system, and begin your run. The CFX instrument will automatically collect fluorescence data, either from channel 1 if performing a cyber protocol, or from all channels if performing a probe-based assay. Once your run is in process or complete, you can then go into CFX Maestro software and define the plate layout. We hope this has been a helpful guide for plate layout and loading in CFX Maestro software, and wish you success in your real-time PCR experiments.